a rare evening broadcast, if you will. I have something on my mind wanted to talk about, and what I've realized is if I don't talk about it when something's bothering me, then I never talk about it. And then like life goes on and I forget about it. But I want to get on really quick with probably the five of you who will be up at 12.30 in the morning, Central Standard Time, to talk about something that really struck home with me tonight. And that is this idea of whatever you meditate on, you're going to manifest in your life. And this life lesson comes from my 11-year-old daughter who had a bit of a traumatic experience a few nights ago when she woke up with just pretty much projectile vomiting. And um, unlike how I was raised when I got sick, I would go down to my mother's room and I would be like, Mom, I just puked everywhere. In 2022, you now get FaceTime calls from upstairs from your 11-year-old saying, Mom, I just puked everywhere, somewhere around 1.30 in the morning. So I got up to that and then was up with her all night. And it was like clockwork almost every hour. She would wake up from almost like a dead sleep to just puke everything up. And there was nothing left in her stomach, just water. And so uh, Larry and I tag team this situation. And um, he took her to the urgent care when they opened um, the other day. And, you know, they gave her fluids and gave her something not so she doesn't throw up. So anyways, that's the traumatic story that happened. So now, fast forward, we're trying to have dinner tonight and I come home and you know, she really hasn't eaten all day. And, um, and I'm just seeing this thought process at work in her mind. And she's worried, you know, she's worried. And it's, it's interesting to see like two parent styles, right? So Larry's like, you got to eat, just eat something. And it's like command and control, like just eat something. And I'm looking at it and I'm discerning. I'm like, ah, oh, she's really got like the devil's talking to her is really what's happening. She's got a thought process or we'll just call them, you know, negative thought process, whatever you want to call it. And, you know, she's just hesitant and we're doing really light stuff. I'm talking like bread, rice, crackers and she just doesn't want to eat so finally she's like she's like mom I just she's like how do you guys fast like how do you even fast I'm like well when we fast we also you know consume the word of God that fills you up but more importantly I'm like the devil's lying to you right now the devil's telling you if you eat something right now you're going to puke it up so you're going to puke again you're going to relive that traumatic experience all over again and so he's in the middle of lying to her she's got this thought process and she's like I just she's like but my stomach is so hungry like her body is saying I want to eat but her mind is the thing that's preventing her from eating because she's worried she's going to relive this traumatic situation again and it makes me think about you know, I had a friend once where uh, his family was in a car accident um, in Florida in this in this particular vehicle. And he was telling me how his wife never wanted to get in the vehicle again. Because anytime she was in that vehicle, it was like reliving that whole situation over again. You hear like the kids screaming in the back. And you your mind has this ability to replay trauma. And so it just really got to me thinking. And I, I said to her, I was like, this is where you're at. I'm like, this is the battle you're in right now. Is that you're being told all these things are going to happen but you have to change what you believe. Like you can't agree with that belief. You have to believe that, hey, you know, you haven't thrown up all day. You've had a, a couple of things to eat. You've been able to keep all that down. I was like, you have to choose in this very moment to believe what you want to believe. You're either going to agree with what God's saying and you're totally healed. You haven't had any anything bad happen. Here are the facts. Or you can continue to agree with what you're thinking about in your head, this traumatic situation. And it's, it might sound small, but this is where the devil starts, right? The devil will start like it was something like this. And before you know it, you know, it cascades into like an eating disorder. I know it sounds crazy, but that's how the devil works. He gets one little foot in, one little thought in, and then it just, it grows and it grows and it grows and it grows. So you got to cut it off at the root when it starts. And so, so anyways, you know, she made the choice in that moment. I made her chicken noodle soup and I gave her some crackers. And so she had soup and crackers and, you know, and you could see a total disposition change as she's eating, right? And like, she's eating, I'm distracting. I want to hear like the school drama, what's going on at school. And so, you know, she just worked her way through it. And it was like a small, we got a win, right? We got a little win there. But it's been on my mind the rest of the night because it's like, I just, even in my own life, you know, my own life of whatever I am meditating on, I will manifest that. And when I was explaining, like part of the story is I told her, I was like, the mind is such a powerful thing that if you believe you're going to throw up in this moment, you will throw up. Your body will do it. Your mind 
will make your body do that. Your body has, your mind has that power. And so the reality is whatever you are going to meditate on, you're going to manifest that in your life. And so I just feel like it's a word for other people. There's a lot of sickness going around right now. Um, and even other stuff, you know, even a ton of transition. There's a lot of transition that's happening for people, different jobs, new places. And so I just want to encourage you, want to exhort you that what you meditate on, if you believe your life is never going to get better than it is, if you believe that you're going to live with depression forever, if you believe that your marriage is never going to become what it should be, if you believe your kids are always going to be wandering around, I guess when I'm, you know, like, like wander off and not come back to you or your relationships will be strained. I guess what I'm trying to say is, I find, and I don't know if I'm going to word this the right way, but I find at times I'm either agreeing with a bad thought process or I'm arguing with a bad thought process. I'm not necessarily saying the complete opposite of that thought process. So you know what it's like, you ever wake up in the middle of the night, maybe you had like a hamburger before you went to bed and then you wake up with indigestion and it's that time of night where it's like two or three in the morning and you're like, am I having a heart attack right now? Is this what's happening to me right now? What's going on? And you kind of, you start arguing and it's like, no, God says this or no, I had this hamburger or no. And you're like arguing with it, right? You're either agreeing with it or you're arguing with it. And both of those are like losing positions. And I, I guess what I'm trying to exhort myself in and even you guys is to say, how do we, we need to make the complete opposite confession. And I, I started doing that tonight as I was packing and I was like, Lord, I thank you that, you know, my, my family is healthy and whole and my daughter is fully, completely healed. And my husband is rejuver, rejuvenated. And, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm at a hundred percent. God, I thank you that I'm a hundred percent. God, I thank you for energy. I thank you that, you know, my body's functioning exactly the way that you've designed it to function. And it's like, instead of, arguing with the other stuff, I started confessing the reality of what scripture says about me and what scripture says about, you know, the people in my life. And I know I don't, I don't know if I could necessarily like, you know, cause then I try to, my brain's like, well, what about like over a nation? Would it, would it work? And so I get all like philosophical, but then I pulled myself back down. I said, you know what? No, but for me, I can make this choice for me. I can make the choice that what I'm going to meditate on is not the next major medical emergency. What I'm going to meditate on is not how much money is in my bank account. I'm going to meditate on what truth is. I'm going to make the confession that I'm whole, I'm healed, I'm happy, I'm satisfied, I have energy, you know, my marriage is at 100%, my job satisfaction is at 100%, my children are walking with the Lord, you know, my my daughter, you know, has a deep relationship with Jesus Christ. It's like, I'm going to start to make those confessions and manifest that in my life. I'm going to meditate on those things. I'm going to meditate on the word of God. I'm not going to meditate on you know, whatever, like the latest, you know, trend is on TikTok or whatever the, the newest sitcom is or Netflix special or Disney plus thing, whatever we fill our time with outside of meditating on the things that give us life. So anyways, I know it's a late night rant, a little odd for me, but it's in my spirit and it just, I'm, I'm encouraging myself and I say, you know what, I got to get on here. I want to try to get on here more and, and share. So I'm very surprised. There's almost 30 of you on this late at night. So welcome. And, you know, I, like I said, I'm just going to do it wherever I'm at. I don't really have makeup on. This is like today's makeup leftover, which I want to give you a tip. I thought this was an interesting tip for all the ladies. You may not know this, but I had a girlfriend teach it to me one time. She used to work at a makeup counter in Nordstrom's. She was like touching things up. But if you take a Q-tip, you put a little bit of lotion on it, just a little bit, you can actually like anytime, because I was like, I better clean up my mascara from underneath my eye. You can just take that and it just takes the makeup right off. Don't know if you know that. But that's what I did before the broadcast. So I looked a little more refreshed. You know what I'm saying? So it's trying to help you guys out. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. And I'll see you this weekend. I don't know if you guys are coming out to Phoenix, but... Uh, we're bringing like the whole team out there. So it's like, I'll be there. Joy's going to be there. Chelsea's going to be there. Lance is going to be there. And uh, we're going to go, we're going to do some broadcasting. Um, I think Lance speaks on Friday, kind of around two. I don't know if we're going to stream it or not. You know how these social media platforms are. They're very strict about those things. But um, but yeah, come out and meet us. Come out and hang out and see the team. And um, we're doing a lot more events. I know I mentioned it the other day, but We've got a, I think we might even do a 7M Gen event this year, which is really crazy, uh, which is for all the young people out there. So anyways, 
couple more little hidden things I'm telling you about towards the end of the broadcast for you people that stayed to the end of the broadcast. All right, guys. Good night. Everybody go to bed. It's very late. Why are you up? Go to bed. Tie for bed. Okay. That'll be your reminder. This is a good place to go to bed. Put the phone down. Go to bed. All right. Bye, guys.